we yes, are. that is us. And we are about to sign our first ever Formula One contract. But let's take a step back. How did we get here? Yes, this is finally time. Welcome everyone to my F1 24 driver career mode. It's been ages since I've done a driver career mode. Ages in real life since I've done a career mode. And I'm super excited on F1 24 to do this for the first time. And it first starts with the calendar. And thanks to you guys, you voted for which tracks you wanted to see on the calendar. And this is going to be it. We're going to have Bahrain. We're going to have Saudi Arabia. We're going to be going from Silverstone to Suzuka. We're going to have lots of exciting tracks on this calendar. We'll start off and quickly go through it. Then we start in Bahrain, go to Saudi Arabia, go to Australia, Japan. Then we have a very, very claustrophobic middle section in Europe, Monaco, Canada, Spain, Austria, Silverstone. Then we go to Spa, missing out Hungary. We do have Imola as well. I did forget to remove that bef after before. And then we, after Spa, we have... We do miss out on the Netherlands, but then we go to Monza. We skip back and then head to Singapore. Then we have Texas, which is a sprint race. We miss Mexico. We go to Brazil. We do not have Las Vegas, unfortunately. You guys did not want to see that. But then we finish on Abu Dhabi, just like old times. Brazil, Abu Dhabi. One of the best two ending track combos on the calendar, especially on the F1 game. So it's thanks to you guys for voting on my community tab. I hope you like the calendar. I certainly do. There's a couple tracks I'm going to find really difficult. But in terms of other settings, AI 90, we're going to have a full qualifying session and then a 35% race. We're also going to have approximate weather. We always like to have that. Driver moves obviously on resource rate, default, default. We're not going to switch any of that just about just yet. But we fault frequencies and fault types are going to be high. We want lots of engine failures, and failures for other people, not us. And lots of chaos. We're going to put increased on safety car and increased on red flag as always. We do love as much carnage in these race to glory videos. And car damage is going to be simulation. Yes, we are going to go extremely difficult for this. Low fuel mode is just going to be easy. I'm not very good at fuel, to be honest. So I just keep it on whatever it starts me. But the damage rate, as I've said, is going to be simulation and simulation. Because we want to be able to damage all parts of our cars to, to make, give the maximum experience. And we are about to create our career identity. And if you guys haven't read the title already. This is a Kimi Antonelli for Logan Sargent career mode. We are embodying every part of Antonelli. We're going to try. We, we tried and get, got his helmet to look as much like real life. We, his driver number is number four in F2, but unfortunately Norris has gone for that. So we've gone for number five. We will be starting at Williams and we will be replacing Logan Sargent. Antonelli in for Sargent. A move that is very, very likely to happen this season. At the end of this season or maybe even mid-season. Comment down below what you guys think about Antonelli for Sargent in real life. But we are going to be replacing him in the F1 game before 2024. And we are going to be the only rookie on the grid. As Eleanor, our agent, waffles on about the the RT our RTG but we will be starting as with Alexander Albon as our teammate and that is how we got here with a contract right in front of us we can decide where we want to go we could go 75 and get max as much R and D as we can we could even go down in our racing if we wanted to but obviously it's our first season we don't we would improve a lot but we maybe not that much so we're just going to go with what they recommend us and that is 69 <laughs> funny but so that's a plus four only the one season you can only do one season and we are going to sign our contract and there you go we are on the formula one grid eleanor knows what's it what's happening let's go and crush F1. A new prodigy is on the F1 grid. And it's Kimi Antonelli.
first race this season, a couple of things. Throughout your career, you'll get a lot of important information. Keep an eye on this tab between each race to see what you can expect. You also have a wonderful team of specialists that will be dedicating some of their time to help us with this. Do you have a moment? Go and see your team. If they don't find it, they promise. Okay then, so new specialists are in. Obviously, you guys probably already know that, but let's check our messages to begin with. Let's see what Mark and Eleanor and maybe even James Vowles has slid into our DMs, but we'll see what we're dealing with in terms of the expectations for this season. We need to be the best we can be. We want to be able to beat Alexander Albon as much as possible. And with that starts here and now. So here we are then. We see our teammate rivalry, Alexander Albon versus Kimi Antonelli. We, um, our team of specialists as well, who we're we going to head over to now. So immediately we'd go for the manufacturing specialist and see what they have to say. Okay, then we're going to do complete the race weekend because, you know, we, we might as well. It's one or the other. We're realistically, we're going to do both. And we get XP, it seems, as well. Okay then, so we have a target of 69 which we set ourself and now it's time to advance for the first time and collect some resource points. Albon obviously gets more than us because he has more acclaim, he's been at the team for longer but hopefully we will improve that soon and now it's time to go to the grid reveal. Okay then, I think that is possibly the best feature 
one of, well, one of the best features in the actual advancing of the career mode because honestly next season when drivers have moved that is going to be incredible to see the drivers in new outfits and stuff and as you can see we have just purchased our first upgrade and it's gonna it's on the powertrain we think we need i think i feel like we need more speed down the straights even before the the, the season started i'm just going to go for that i saw albon had his eyes on aero as well so we go straight in for uh for that but now Let's go to qualifying, which we are here. Okay then, first competitive lap on F1 24. We've done some practice laps and you'll also notice I'm trying to learn how to drive f the these f1 cars without the dynamic racing lines big ask but i'm going for it i feel like it really improves the visuals without the racing line so we're going to go as good as well as we can but as you can see we are struggling at the start it is only our first few laps though and we need to get used to the handling i lowered the handling from the practice so it's not 90 ai anymore we're going to try and work towards that and then possibly go up over that but it is just about, I think it's 84 for this because we were about a second slower in practice. But this will explain why we are so we are why we are so quick now. But don't worry, it will be fixed for the race, and we are going to make adjustments so we don't go too quick in qualifying as we go P1 ahead of a Red Bull and two Mercedes and a Ferrari. Antonelli, Antonelli doing Antonelli things, but. And that, should, and that is enough to get us through into Q2 in P6. So you can tell we've gone too low with the AI and we will be changing that. But obviously we have to change that after qualifying. But we absolutely thrump Albon in this first rivalry bit over eight tenths faster than him. As we start our first, sec first lap in Q2 or second, one of the two. Either way, it's the last lap of the session in Q2 as we start. I will also be giving you here a bit of a bit of my thoughts and insights into ha the handling as what you can see and to what it really feels like. It feels different for sure. There is definitely a difference. I'm sure you guys have seen that. This is just after the patch as well. So it's already come out and or I didn't actually feel what the first if what the patch what it was like before the patch. But I'm just going to tell you, it feels good, genuinely. I was a bit confused. I didn't realise there was a patch when I first played this. And um, it feels much better. You can you can turn in. It's not as... I don't think it's as much as you used to. You have to put more sort of oomph into it. Brake dragging isn't really a thing either anymore. It's a lot more difficult if you want to do it. But I feel like the cars are a lot better as well. Um... It, you, you turn in incredibly quickly, but your braking needs to be good. Because if your braking is a bit too much, then, you're, um, then you'll go way too wide. But if your braking's a bit too little, then you're going to find yourself struggling to even get to the corners. You can see I broke way too early and I went off the track right there. It was perfect timing. But yeah, as you can see, we're going to come around the final corner. We're definitely going to make it into Q2 with two seconds up. And again, see, we broke a bit early. We lost about three tenths there, but we broke early and we didn't make the corner. So the braking is very, very important on this game. So we come up to the line and that is a very easily making it in, again in P6 through into Q2. And then we simmed Q3 as well because I didn't want to start too high up the grid. So we will be starting P10 for the race. I just didn't want it. I thought it was a bit unrealistic because because we couldn't up the AI between sessions. So we just went for upping it before. But there we are beating Albon looking incredibly evil. That is exactly what we like to see. And we have improved our pace as well by 750. And hopefully that is going to continue to go up. And so now let's head to the race. Today, as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities 
and it could be a strategic race this one with Sakia notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out, the drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Fernando Alonso yesterday puts him on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Sainz, Leclerc, Perez, a Williams, Ricardo, Sonoda, Stroll, Gasly, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Joe, Bottas, Magnussen, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And alongside me in the commentary box today, a man who I always look up to, which is easier said than done. Anthony Davidson. Now it's a new season, plenty of new opportunities, but I think I'm going to start with a question we may have asked last year as well. Can anyone stop Max Verstappen? That's what they're hoping for, and that's what we're hoping for as well in some ways, because we don't want to see just one driver or one team running away with it this season like we had last year, or even the years gone by in this sport. Can we get to see a two-way or even a three- or four-way fight throughout this race today? Fingers crossed we'll get that. So then, in the strategy screen, we are. The strategy seems pretty self-explanatory. A soft, hard, or a two-stop. But I did not want to go for the soft. So I have watched other creators' races, and the tyre wear in Bahrain is incredibly high. The hards look like a great race tyre. So I was thinking about starting on the hard tyres, but then decided... I don't want to start on the hards. Everyone else around us is starting on the soft tires so i went so i'm gonna go f and start on the mediums and just be you know different and go mediums to hard so we don't get too much tire wear but we still have a reasonably competitive rate uh car and tires compared to everyone else you see it says it's three seconds slower it's not i did the maths trust me but either way we are going to be going on the mediums and go, then pitting on around lap lap 11 uh, or maybe maybe yeah lap nine, lap 9 actually yeah for or lap 8 yeah lap 8 sounds good for the hards and then taking the hards to the end of the race as we go to five red lights for the Bahrain Grand Prix our first race here on F124 it's lights out and away we go. Mark telling us to go. We are going. But Ricardo has had a mega start. But we do stay ahead of him. He somehow, for some reason, just slowed down as we break. We want to be cautious. We want to avoid damage in our first race. As that has cost us quite a few positions, actually. We've lost out and we're down into P14. But Ocon's looking rather nervous, rather shaky in that Alpine that he's just overtaken. He's three wide up ahead. And wow, Ocon's trying to get in the middle of it. We're trying to get in the middle of Ocon. And they still going three wide, still going for it. That's incredible racing. Surely they're not going to go three wide into that corner. No, yes, they are. We're going to send it round the outside on Esteban Ocon. Wow, what a move. Then we're going to try and go round the outside of all three of them. We get round the outside of Yuki Tsunoda. Can't quite get Ricardo or Stroll, who are still... Still going side by side. They've gone side by side this whole lap as we take out our ball line. I did not like it. It was rude to me. But either way, Ricardo and Stroll still going wheel to wheel. Stroll looks like he's got it. He's got a better drag. But Ricardo, can he come back? Ricardo's harvesting battery and he just loses out. But we cl come clattering into the back of him. Good thing we didn't break our front wing. But either way, Ricardo and Stroll and Sonoda, mega, mega battles on lap one as we go a bit wide you can see we're adjusting uh, taking time to adjust to without the, the dynamic racing line and we this looks like it's going to be a defensive race for us because even though drs is enabled we're struggling to stay within ricardo's range because he's just faster than us he's got a faster car and Sonoda is all over the back of us on his soft tyres compared to our mediums. We are struggling a bit to keep it pace. But during some of the corners, we are catching up to him big time. But then on the straights, we just seem to lose, pull away. And I also forgot to turn off my ERS. So I'm down to 10% on the battery. So we're going to need to save some of that. 
but we need to stay within DRS of Ricardo as well. So this is going to be incredibly difficult as Yuki Sonoda goes from the move. You can see how much more battery he's got. We're going to try and hold it round the outside. Can we just do that? Uh, uh, what? Our engine's gone. Our engine's... It's actually happened. Our engine's gone in our... Wow. Well, uh, that was definitely not in the script. What? Our engines failed. Our, our engines actually failed in the fur in our first race, in our debut race. We didn't even finish lap two. Oh my word. Have you ever seen a worse rookie debut than that? Comment down below if you've seen a worse rookie debut than that, because I sure haven't. We barely lasted two laps. It's Max Verstappen then who wins the first race of the season. Shock horror. And it's by a comfortable eight seconds to Fernando Alonso, who started on Palm Piastri, claims the final podium spot. Alexander Albon, our teammate, finishes in P16. But us on our debut, got an engine failure before even finishing lap two. I I, I honestly don't, don't have words. We're ahead of Kick Sauber on just the position, but... What a awful, awful start to our career mode. Warner excessive parts. Our stats gone down. We're now zoned down to 65. Mark had an email saying sorry. And he's given us 400 resource points, which haven't gone through. So he scammed us. So we've had a scam engineer as well. But I don't think that could have gone much worse, to be honest. Um, we've gone down in our rating. We've... Um, not even got points. Our engines failed on lap two, and it was the control electronics, which is the probably the most important engine part, as we only have two of it. So we'll be taking penalties, we know already, at some point in the season, as we've only got one other. But that is a premature end to the episode, guys, because of the engine failure. But thank you guys for watching this. If you do enjoy, make sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys next time for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Hopefully our engine doesn't, engine doesn't fail then. See you guys then. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Goodbye.